Well, hello, tubers. What do we have here? We have the next addition to my RV, which I think should prove to be something very useful. It's called the Power Air Fryer Oven Plus. Now, the reason I got this is because I keep talking about getting an actual convection microwave, and everybody I talk to says the convection microwave is an upgrade to a regular microwave, but it completely sucks compared to this unit. And since it claims to be a 7-in-1 multi-cooker and can do all of these wonderful things, I want to see if it's true. I've talked to quite a few ladies that swear by this unit and say it's a far superior unit to many other air fryers. So we are going to find out. And we're going to do a little bit of cooking. I'm not really an unboxing channel, but this is what it looks like when you open the lid. And there are a bunch of recipe books that come with this and there is the basic unit let's get into it and of course inside we have all the various trays that you will need to execute the seven in one and there's the rotisserie mechanism I assume okay so everything seems to be here and it's wrapped in its own plastic condom. So let's remove the plastic and see what it's like. Now take a look at this baby. I think it's very RV friendly because of the size. Perfect for cooking for one or two people. Now let's open this door now that we've taken the tape off of it. Now that you can see there's more accessories inside. But for those of you who like specifications, let me tell you how wide and deep it is. 10 inches wide, and for depth, you're looking at 10 inches also. 10 by 10. Fairly decent size, I would say. Let's remove this paraphernalia. I assume this is a drip tray. Let's see. Let's get that out. Yes. And I was correct. That is a drip tray. Let's see what we have up here. Everybody likes a nice rack. Or two, I assume. Okay, it's plugged in. We have our racks in and our drip plate. We will not install the rotisserie and I do like that it has a window which is something that many RV ovens do not have. And of course some RVs don't even come with ovens anymore. They come with a dishwasher or nothing else. So look at how nifty and clean and neat that looks. Let's put a frozen pizza in there and try it out. What do you say folks? Now since I already have a square pizza, I really don't have to do much other than maybe cut it in half. But I did test to see if this entire Pillsbury pizza could fit inside, and it actually could. But in case I ruin it on my first <laughs> test run here, I figured I'd only cook half of it. So there it is on the top rack, and the cooking instructions is to do this at 450. And um, it says don't place it directly on the rack. So we're going to be rebels and break all the rules and put it right on the rack. So let's fire this baby up and see what happens. Okay, let's first close the door and look at that. Glowing LED. Let's get her right up to 450. Is it even allowing me to go to 450? Oh no, it cannot. Huh, okay, very interesting. So obviously the cooking temperatures are different. Oh, what's it doing? 15 minutes, it's saying. It's alive! I wonder if the light will work if I push the button. Where is that light? Oh, look at that. I can see what's going on. It's wonderful! Okay, I stopped the baking process about a minute or a minute and a half sooner than I should have because it looked like it was ready to roll. As far as I'm concerned, that pizza is done. 
and any further it would be burned. So let's take a look and see how crispy it is. Whoa, I can feel how crispy it is. Okay, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to show you what it looks like so that you can decide. Okay, so here we have it. I think the mistake we made was that I should not have started on the top rack. So that's my first lesson learned. But um, I'm going to show you the actual photographs of the underside of the crust so that you can see how crispy it is. So I'm actually quite happy with the crispiness of how this turned out. Of course, the topping is a bit burned. Not much. It's still quite edible. And on the back side, it's... And I think on the reverse side, I would call that perfect. So that was a fun first attempt for pizza. I think ribs and chicken will be my next experiment. starting to love this oven plus but I need to thoroughly test it before I recommend it to you in your RV or van so let's get her done it's a beautiful day here in Western Canada we just ticked over to April 1st and um, it's about 75 degrees it's fantastic it's like a cool summer day it's been hotter than Hades here in Canada for March unbelievable but I'm liking it and that's why we're doing the demonstration outdoors today so let's put the wings in right on the rack. I say we go low rack and we take this one out and let's just place a few big ones on top here. Now no oil has been added and these are still frozen. Of course they've been out for maybe a half hour so they've defrosted slightly just for full disclosure. Let's start it off at 350 for 15 minutes and see how we do and check it then. Now I'm going to flip these things just in case it helps. Got to remember this is the first time for me doing this too. Okay, let's have the heating resume. And by the way, they were getting crispy. I could tell by when I flipped them. So the million dollar question is, are the wings crispy? Do they look crispy? They look crispy to me. Let's zoom in before I even touch them. Those wings are looking pretty crispy to me, but let's get a closer look and pull them out. So the million dollar question was, are the wings going to be crispy with the air fryer? They look pretty darn crispy to me. Let me uh, kind of poke around here and move this around. They're looking really done. Uh, let's rip one of these open to make sure the inside is cooked. Looks cooked to me. No pink at all, very white. I think this is a uh, done deal. Absolutely crispy. You can almost hear the fork running over the top. It's that crusty crispy. So I think it's uh, excellent. What do you think? Now that's a crispy and well done chicken wing. Not well done like as an over well done, but it's done well. Not bad for my first attempt for chicken wings. Oop. I want you guys to know that this video is sponsored by Explorer Steve, Explorer Steve's van and do-it-yourself channel coming to you from Las Vegas because I actually texted him and showed him a picture of me buying this and he said, I'd like to buy one, but I want to know if the wings are going to be crispy. So of course, I had to test it too because I want my wings to be crispy. So quite happy for this. Oh, let me swallow. But I want you to know that not all these machines are created equal. And apparently this is kind of the Chevis Regal of performance at a cheap price point, the Air Fryer Oven Plus, because um, 
Some people have experienced disappointment with uh, different models than this, but apparently in all the RV parks that I've been spending time at, all the ladies that have one of these swear by it. And when I hear the same story of how good it is from at least three different ladies, I know it's a good unit. That's why I imported this from the US of A. You actually can't even get these in Canada, not this particular model. And the similar models are around $300. These units typically are priced between $100 and $130 US dollars and you can often find them at Walmart. Now if you want to do all sorts of food and be very versatile in your van or your RV, this is the unit. It's way better than a microwave, way better than a convection microwave. And I'm, I'm actually convinced I don't need a convection microwave now that I have this because this kicks ass and I'm very happy. So that's just my thoughts. Now your experience may be different if you don't pay attention to time, temperature, and a few other details because obviously you can ruin even good food in this if you're not paying attention. It's just a device and used properly, you can get some pretty decent results. That's just my thoughts. So in the meantime, folks, stay safe, keep your wheels on the ground, and stay crispy, my friends, over and out.